Now the more interested you become in lucid dreaming and sleep, the more important it is to establish a proper sleep cycle. But what is sleep? Hello lucid dreamers, my name's Ed, welcome back to Team Lucid Dream. Today we are going to be discussing sleep cycles and the NREM sleep cycle. It's going to be quite science heavy so uh, I'm just going to rush straight into it. Uh, feel free to pause it at any point and go back over the information that I'm going to lay at your feet. The first thing we need to do is we need to understand why we sleep at night but are awake in the day. As with every other animal that is awake during the day and asleep during the night, this is called the circadian rhythm. But how does it work? Simply put, the circadian rhythm governs the sleep cycle and the behaviour of plants and animals all around the globe. And it's all based on brain chemistry in humans. Firstly, melatonin, which is naturally produced in most plants and animals, slowly gets produced by the brain as the sun begins to set. In short, as the sun begins to drop in the sky, melatonin is produced by the brain and begins to make us sleepy. Now in the mornings with the sunrise the melatonin production stops and there we, we wake up. Now for the first time this episode I'd like to throw it over to our, one of our ace editors Sydney to throw up a graph on the screen. Using the longest summer day in the UK uh, where the sun rises at 4.30 in the morning it sets at half past nine at night you can see on the chart where the melatonin levels begin to drop off about three o'clock in the morning and as the melatonin levels begin to drop that's when we begin to get more awake and by about seven o'clock in the morning that's when we're perfectly awake as the sun begins to set in the sky and everything gets darker melatonin levels increase in the body and that makes us sleepier. Looking at the chart, this is based on mid, a midsummer's day, the longest day in the Gregorian calendar in the UK. If we swap all of these times out for midwinter, for example, Sydney, thank you Sydney. Now, looking at this, comparing the levels of melatonin and when we're supposed to be awake and asleep. Is there any wonder that there is such a thing called SAD or seasonal affective disorder? How many of us have got irritated by waking up in the night and getting home in the dark? It makes you wonder, doesn't it? Now we've covered the circadian rhythm, it's time for us to move on to the NREM REM cycle. Sydney, can I have the third graph please? Thank you, Sydney. Now, from this graph, it's clear that every 90 to 120 minutes, the brain goes through a cycle of REM and NREM sleep. These periods of REM get slowly get longer throughout the night, and most vivid or lucid dreams are likely to happen just before waking up. Now, at the onset of sleep, on this graph, the onset of sleep is 11 o'clock. I know it's not concurrent with the previous graphs, but Bear with me. At the onset of sleep, serotonin is released and triggers non-rapid eye movement sleep, or NREM. After a period of time, a chemical called acetylcholine gets reduced by the base of the brain in the pons area, um, and this is what triggers REM, rapid eye movement sleep. Dream sleep. At the same time that this secretion occurs by the brain, signals are sent to the cortex to disabled neurons in the spine. This is what is known as REM atonia and it is it's sleep paralysis effectively um, only you are not awake. This paralysis pre prevents the sleeper from acting out in their dreams and causing themselves any damage as their dreams play out in their head. Now, after another shorter period of time, non-adrenaline and serotonin is released yet again into the brain 
and resets to the beginning of the 90 minute cycle and start to NREM sleep. So in conclusion, the REM cycle becomes more frequent the longer you sleep. The longer you sleep, the more your brain will get the much needed chemicals it needs in order to function and repair. Sleep is absolutely essential for the human condition to survive. Now, why do you think that sleep deprivation is such an effective torture method? I know that one of our one of my colleagues in Team Lucid Dream, Giz Edwards, has done some in-depth experimentation into sleep paralysis. So I reckon you should check his videos out on the subject because they're fascinating. Just brushing up on the science of the sleep cycle and the chemistry of the brain, it's amazing to see how complex our brains are. Chemicals and signals shoot through them all every day, even when you're asleep, especially when you're dreaming. The old grey matter is still pumping enough chemicals through it to make GlaxoSmithKline proud. Thank you for watching the video today. I know it's been a bit of a science heavy one, um, but that's what I like. I hope you like it as well. If you do like it, take your white pointy thing and smash the thumbs up button below. You know it makes sense. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing um, and keep up to date with everything that this team is doing on the Team Lucid Dream Forum, on Reddit, on Twitter, on Facebook. See you next time. Happy dreaming.